Hey, what's going on everybody? It's JB the Ranch Mechanic coming at you today with just a quick video about how I get machines that I'm restoring ready for paint and how I get rust and stuff off of them. And this cesspool that we're staring at right here it looks really nasty, but all it is is trisodium phosphate, a little bit of washing soda, and water. And this is a homebrew electrolysis tank. Um, how this is set up is that I have uh, four sacrificial anodes, which are graphite rods. I've got four of them in here, all linked together with some uh, 10 gauge aluminum fence wire. Um, and I do that so that the electrical current flows to the part in the middle, you know, equally, and it's getting it from all sides. But those are the anodes, so those are connected to the positive side, and then the part is also wrapped in the same wire, and that's connected to the negative side, so it becomes a cathode. And what that does, when you run a current through this, you're basically turning the rust into a black oxide, a black iron oxide. So it becomes inert and it no longer affects the part. And this is a really great way of restoring old machine tools and castings and stuff, especially things like my lathe bed. I did my lathe bed during the lathe restoration in this very same tank because it's, it's long enough. Um, anything with a precision machine surface on it, you don't want to go taking a wire wheel or anything abrasive to it. And what this does, it not only converts the rust into an inert black coating um, that I usually just scrub off anyway, but it also will cause paint to delaminate. And some of the paint they have on these old machine tools is really tough stuff. Um, this is actually the second go around for this particular part. And this is actually another machine that I'm working on. I have a whole other series of videos that I started last year on this thing, but it's been sitting ever since then. But this is one of the center castings uh, support arm for a 1945-ish 12-inch uh, Craftsman bandsaw, part number 103-0103. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, but my power supply is just a little uh, Hanmatech benchtop power unit. I'm gonna have to excuse the mess um, that I got from Amazon. Um, running about five amps at 16 volts and you can see all of the bubbling going on in here. And basically all that's doing is causing the um, water molecules to break up because of the electric current and what's coming off of this is a very low volume of hydrogen gas because water is just comprised of hydrogen and oxygen molecules. So it's breaking that down and the hydrogen is what's being released. So um, yeah, that's basically how I do this. Uh, this has been cooking since yesterday evening. I checked it this morning and this paint is just really tough, really, really tough stuff. So I, I left it in there a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and shut this thing down now and we'll pull this out and have a look at it and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Now it's always better to have your part fully submerged so you don't have any etch lines, but this I'm not too worried about. This is pretty tough old cast iron, so that's better. And you can see what I'm talking about. Most of the rust is just gone. It's just been completely blown off. And you can see the paint is all bubbling now. So that, that has been delaminated from the surface, so that will just wipe off, if you see that. Problem is, these are, these are rough castings. You might see the paint just flaking off there. So you can just take a, a bristle brush, a stiff bristle brush, and most of that paint will just come off. So that works out really well for getting paint, this really tough old paint. It might even be lead-based paint. I don't know if this has been repainted before at some point. Um, but it's a great way of getting paint and stuff to come off of really rough castings, especially castings like this that have a bunch of support arms and braces, you know, molded into them. It's hard to get anything with like a wire wheel or anything in there to, to get that out accurately, but this stuff is just flying right off now. So we're just about done with this part. Um, I'm going to let it cook a little while longer and then we'll clean it up and then on to the next. There's about six or seven different gigantic pieces of this that I need to put in here. So um, that's how I do it. I don't have a sandblast cabinet, but this I think is uh, a little bit safer. It takes a lot longer, but it's much safer for vintage machinery that has a lot of precision castings and stuff that you don't want to abrade or you know potentially risk uh, ruining the surface. So, like I said, I use uh, I use graphite rods, um, and they are expendable. I mean, they they dissolve as you do this, so you can see the the graphite. It's as the water. I've added water to this, so as the water levels changed. The amount of wear has changed, but it's it's much more narrow where it was submerged in the water up to this point, and then I added water up to here and then up to here. So obviously these wear away as you uh, use them, but the advantage that you have with using something like graphite as opposed to steel is the fact that steel 
it will still it'll still work really well. It's a great conductor, but it will get coated in yuts. It'll take all the crud that's coming off of the part you're trying to clean, and it sticks to the steel. It's, and it blocks off your, your flow of electricity after a while. you got to clean it off and then resubmerge it. A great example of that are these old uh, backing plates for my lathe that I machined incorrectly. I went through a couple of them before I got it right. But um, you can see that all that junk built up on there, I mean, it's just, it's just crusted on there. Now, a lot of this stuff and this white buildup that's around the edges of the tank, this, these are the salts that have come out of solution as some of the water has evaporated. So that's not all stuff that came off the parts. This is all just heavy salt from the TSP that's in there. But all the junk that's actually attached itself to the steel, that is rust and garbage and junk that has come off of other parts that I've cleaned in here. So that's why I decided to use the graphite. Because the graphite just wears away slowly and it just becomes part of the solution. So you don't have to worry about cleaning off the graphite rods ever. You just use them up until they're gone and then you replace them. It's, it's not the cheapest route to go, but it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility for most people. So anyway, just a quick uh, showcase of how I work on a lot of these older machine tools with uh, castings and stuff. It seems to work pretty well. So we're going to take a wire brush to this and get the rem remnants of this paint out of these little rough parts of the casting. But as you can see, it's just kind of flaking off. So that's uh, much better. I actually put aircraft remover and citrus strip on this, and neither one of those products touched it. <laughs> it's tough old paint, so. All right, I'm gonna get this guy set back in here. I'll lean it on its side this time. You gotta be careful with castings like this. It's always better to have it completely submerged, like I said earlier, but the problem with castings like this is that when you lay something on, your, on its side to get it all the way under the water, as these uh, hydrogen bubbles get released, they get trapped in there. So you have these pockets, you know, on these ridges where all this gas builds up and it will not, the electrolysis won't take place unless it's, you know, actually touching the liquid and the hydrogen kind of builds up and, and holds that stuff, holds the, the liquid at base. So you're not getting any um, electrolytic effect in those areas. So um, I think we'll be okay. It's on enough. I have it kind of sitting on an angle now. It's up against here. So I'm hoping that will allow the hydrogen to kind of flow out as it builds up. So we'll give that a try. Get our negative hooked back up here. On there. It's kind of hokey. But... And the nice thing about this Hanmatech, it's a HM310. Um, you have your main on off here, and then you have an output control. So I can leave this thing on and maintain all of my voltage and amperage settings because everything is controllable individually. And then even though my main power is on, my output is off. So then I hit this button, the light turns green, and then we're right at 5 amps. 17 volts drawing 86 watts so it's putting out enough power to to uh, power a few light bulbs so and then you can see instantly we get that uh, that really good bubbling that's what we want to see so anyway guys that's how I do it it's just a, a quick introduction to you know basic electrolytic rust slash paint removal um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'm certainly no expert, but I've been doing this for a few years now, and I've restored a lot of machines using this technique, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Just leave me a comment and let me know. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching. You guys have a great week, and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.